climbing around on either the cow or the bull. Hey, I climbed to the top. Let me out! It's so different than a lot of the Bahamas that we've seen. And right on the ocean's edge, whew, it's a long way down. Can you tell that there's barely nothing fresh in this meal? We got a makeshift uh, windlass going on here. Woohoo! I felt like I'm surfing today. Well, I'm a little nervous. We're gonna be entering Hatchet Bay Harbor and we gotta do it under sail, of course, because we have no engine. After backpacking, we decided to see the world by sailboat. We sailed from the Great Lakes of Canada and made it to the Bahamas where the unexpected happened. We're still not able to start the engine. And we're gonna have a feast! We got a dolphin fish! Let's go! It's just epic! Just climbing around on either the cow or the bull, these two boulders. They're pretty cool. Although they're fairly, fairly high off the ground, so I'm a little nervous to climb all the way up to the top on this harder side. So I'm probably going to spin around to the other side since if I fall, well, we don't have insurance <laughs> and uh, it would probably hurt a lot. There's a lot of spiky rocks here, but a lot of cool holds and places to grab onto, but a lot of them are really sharp. Well, I made it up. I kind of cheated because I went on the easier side on the back side, but hey, I climbed to the top. I just, it was a little too sketchy here, but a lot of fun. I, if I had a rope, if I had my climbing rope and I uh, could set up some protection, that'd be totally fun. A really nice thing about the Bahamas Islands is that everything is close by. We found these rock formations named Cow and Bull between Queen's Bath and the Glass Window Bridge. The rocks are right next to the Atlantic side of the Queen's Highway. With just enough imagination, you might even be able to see a cow and bull shaped into the rocks. And when the weather is rough, the winds funnel through the boulders and it sounds like the roar of bulls, apparently. Once we were done climbing around, we got back on the long road in direction of the famous glass window bridge. Before fully taking in the glass window bridge, we had to do another pit stop. We veered off the Queen's Highway to explore the limestone. And it didn't take long before Cory found some holes to crawl in right next to 80 foot cliffs. Let me out! Give me your hand! I nope. need you, help me out! I'm pretty sure I can squeeze through. Nope. Let me out! I'm stuck! Give me your hand! This 
East Atlantic side of Eleuthera is just so spectacular. It's so different than a lot of the Bahamas that we've seen. That's really not very tall and very flat. Here there's just those huge cliffs. It kind of reminds me of Newfoundland actually. Well, parts of it anyways. Super neat holes. Like these holes could swallow me. They're almost mini caves. And right on the ocean's edge, whew, it's a long way down. Wow. The amazement continued as we looked over at the glass window bridge. Here you can really see the sharp change in colors with the rich deep blue waters of the Atlantic Ocean on one side, separated by a thin strip of rock to the calm turquoise by the Veluthra or Great Bahama Bank. Real nature's wonder. We made our way to the bridge which apparently has been destroyed and rebuilt many times over the last 130 years. Actually there used to be a natural stone arch but with hurricanes and natural forces it got tore down over the years. Often called the narrowest place on earth and for sure in Eleuthera the glass window bridge is susceptible to what bohemians call rages. Giant hundred foot waves driven up as they enter the narrow concave cliffs. These waves form far out in the Atlantic oceans during storms and come crashing into the bridge like a tsunami. So I'm thinking we're here at low tide. We got some turquoise water here on our left and dark blue, almost um, royal blue on our right. So it's kind of neat the contrast between the two sides of the ocean here. That's open ocean and this is more closed off to the ocean. What an epic day! We had so many fun adventures and when we came back to the boat we even decided to go for a little bit of a snorkel. We took the dinghy over right by the glass window bridge. But I won't lie, the snorkeling was actually not that great. It's a lot of just like wrecks from the bridge, it's a lot of grass and grey and the visibility isn't that great. Actually, we did see a huge lobster, so we tried to get it, but he was way too deep into the rock, so didn't really get it. Oh well, we came back here and now we're just enjoying the scenery around the, our little anchorage. And there's so many little tiny fish right next to the boat, it's crazy. They're like fully surrounding us, all these mini blue fish. Can you tell that there's barely nothing fresh in this meal? <laughs> That's dehydrated potatoes with tons of garlic powder. And then I experimented and made some sort of um, some sort of salad with canned green beans, canned corn, corn canned olives. It's and it has a um, it's like a balsamic maple syrup, Dijon kind of vinaigrette. And then I caramelized some onions with garlic 
and like pecans, walnuts and almonds in there with a little bit of red wine and put some fresh parm and I made some fresh sprouts. And for the meat, we have ground beef cooked with onions, garlic, chili flakes, thyme and rosemary. It's actually really, really good. Master Chef Alex. <laughs> happens with sunsets in the Bahamas? Uh, it seems to never fail. There seems to be some clouds that come in right at the, the last second and kind of block the view of the sunset. Normally you get at least a sliver because it normally sets below those clouds. So the sun comes through the clouds you get to see a little bit of it before it goes through the horizon. But often there's another set of clouds right there where you just get a perfect little sliver and that's all you get to see. I mean it's still pretty but it's just kind of funny how it keeps doing that almost every sunset. Well, we got a makeshift uh, windlass going on here. We're trying out a pulley system to pull up the strain on the anchor so then we can use the chain brake to hold it and then reset the whole system for when there's a heavier winds. Right now the winds aren't too, too bad, but it's a good time to test it before uh, so we're not all rocking around and stuff with crazy waves. So let's see if this is going to work. So we hook this to the chain as far up as possible. So let's go a little further. All right. Then we take up the slack. So now I'm just pulling using the mechanical advantage to help pull the chain up a little bit. Loosen it off the chain. We're uncleaning the chain. Here's my chain break. And we're pulling the chain up. It's definitely a slow process, but in heavy winds, this is going to work really well. So we got a chain break. Basically, we pull that into the cleat and that'll hold the weight of the chain or at least slow it down to give us time to cleat off the chain. And we're off! We got the anchor up to the last 15-20 uh, feet and then just the wave action was pulling our bow up and pulled the anchor right out. So I pulled it up real quick and we pulled out our head sail and now we're off. I'm surfing today. We've got following seas and 15 to 25 knot uh, winds. But it doesn't feel that windy when you're going downwind. It's kind of funny like that. But a lot of adjustment when you're steering because I'm literally surfing down waves. Well, I'm a little nervous. We're gonna be entering Hatchet Bay Harbor 
and the, there's a little cut there. It's not very long, but it's quite narrow. It's only about 60 feet wide, and we got to do it under sail, of course, because we have no engine. If it looks too sketchy, we're going to bail out. But my main concern is losing all of our wind right as we go through the entrance because there's big cliffs on the sides or reasonable sized cliffs on the sides. So I'm going to try to look at the water. It's nice and deep close by to the entrance. So we should be able to get a good idea by looking at the ripples on the water and stuff if there's actually any wind there. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to go in there. If not, we've got a little bit of a backup plan on the back side of uh, a little bit further down past Hatchet Bay because we really, really want to go check out some caves nearby and Hatchet Bay looks really well protected so it'd be nice to get in there if we can. We uh, went through the cut, we lost a bit of wind in our sails kind of midway through the cut so there was, it was really about commitment at that point because we knew we were going to get wind again on the other side of the cut. You could see the trees moving and stuff. So we lost it for, I don't know, five seconds or so before we gained it again and then there was a big gust and we were close hauling so we, we went in quite fast. But then we noticed like, I don't know, 30 other boats right where we wanted to anchor. So we had to go to our second choice of anchorage, which was on the further side, more downwind. And when I was coming in, I was trying to get into away from the channel where the bigger boats go in as well as far enough away from some of the boats that were already anchored here and following the chart I thought I had more than enough room and actually dropped down to like five six feet very quickly and I already had the head sail furled in because we were getting ready to drop the anchor actually Alex dropped the anchor and then I realized oh sh we're in we're in like no water if we drop the anchor here it's not gonna be a good situation because we're at high tide we kind of drifted a little bit more back out and then we dropped the anchor but now we're I don't know let's say three or four boat lengths from this boat which for me I don't enjoy being that close to other boats um, but luckily we're going to swing out this way and that should make it so well first off we have a nice easy route out the cut again or more easy than it was coming in and we'll have nothing to drift into if we happen to drag anchor but we've got like 50 feet of scope out and that's more than enough for where we are right now and luckily our boat is actually sitting in about 10 feet of water so even though the, the, the chain was dropped in around six feet or the anchor, we're in deeper water here and it's even deeper where we're going to swing to this evening. So anyway, that was an interesting, uh, I think that was one of the most difficult anchoring experiences we've ever done in under sail in a crowded anchorage with a tight entrance. So that's uh, good on us. I think we did pretty well. Well, we made it to Hatchet Bay. Uh, he gave us a ride right over to the entrance to the caves. So he saved us a bunch of walking. I think we found the Hatchet Cave. Wow, this is a really cool cave. I find when you go in caves, you never really know what to expect. That's when you know it's a good cave. It's got ladders. Do you feel like walking through some water without shoes? I am way shorter than you are. Sure, if you follow me, you won't get your shorts wet. <laughs> wow, this is so neat. 